All right, let's talk about a problem now that uh, doesn't give you an exact trigonometric ratio that allows you to say what theta is, and let's talk about how we do this problem. So, uh, this particular one, first things first, I want to combine all of my uh, like uh, terms, and a sine 2 theta and a, four, and a 4 sine 2 theta are my like terms because they're both double angles. So I don't have to worry about changing this problem because my entire function is in double angles, so I don't need to worry about changing things, and I'm not going to. We'll just talk about how we solve that at the end. So here we go. I'm just going to combine them some things. So I'm going to add sine 2 theta to both sides. So going ahead and doing and writing that out. So sine 2 theta plus sine 2 theta leaves me with 2 is equivalent to 5 sine 2 theta. So now what I need to do here is I need to go ahead and divide by 5 divide by 5, and what I'm left with here is that sine 2 theta is equivalent to 2 fifths. So again, what I want to talk about here, okay, is the idea of don't let this 2 theta trip you up, okay? 2 theta is still going to be some angle. So what I need to think about here very quickly is it's almost the same thing as if thinking about this as, oh, what if it was just sine theta equals 2 fifths? And earlier in earlier uh, chapters, I know I taught with my class that uh, to uh, take the function off of a, an angle, if you want to solve for the theta, uh, you need to do something called the inverse function of sine, which is the arc sine. So this is the same type of deal what I need to do. Okay, just because it's a 2 theta, don't worry, it's still just a theta. So this idea still holds true, that I can take, okay, this particular uh, idea that I'm talking about is that if y equals sine uh, theta, then the sine inverse of y is equivalent to uh, theta. Okay, so that's a property. And utilizing that property, I can come over here and I can say, okay, well, let's take the uh, inverse sine, which is the arc sine. So take the arc sine of two fifths and take the arc sine of this. Now I'm not left with theta. My answer to this one is. 2 theta. So when I take the arc side of it, so all you're going to do is go to your calculator. So whether you have a TI-84 or whatever kind of calculator you have, you hit second, you get your arc sign, you type in 2 divided by 5, and you hit enter. And I'm going to round this to the nearest uh, 100. So I go ahead and I get 2 theta. So now I get my reference angle of 23.58 degrees. Now the important thing to remember is that when I do this, okay, that's what 2 theta is. And also what you need to recommend, uh, remember is that whatever I get for this angle, it usually gives me what it is, it's reference angle, means it gives you gives me the angle between 0 and 90. It's not going to give me what quadrant it's in. So I now need to think about when was sine positive. So that's why I have to use this. So now I've got to use this reference angle. And sine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2. So remember to find the reference angle and just subtract it from 180. So you take 180 and subtract off that answer. And rounding to the nearest hundredth again, I'm going to get 156.42 degrees. So now that I have those two answers, I'm now going to figure out what theta is. So now going through to find out what theta is, I just divide all of these by 2. So go ahead and divide it by 2 in your calculator. And you're going to get for one of them, theta is going to be equivalent. So if I take this and divide it by 2, and I'm going to keep it all the way out to the hundredths again, which is 78.21 degrees. And divide this by 2, so 23.58. Divide that by 2, and you end up with 11.79 degrees. Now, that's what theta is. So now the important thing to remember is, remember how I discussed the whole thing with the, the double angle. And the double angle, right, deals with the, now I have to take the vertical angle of it and add 180. So the way you do it is you add 180 to this, add 180 to that. So 11.79 plus 180, and you get an answer of 100. 91.79 degrees, add 180 to that, so 78.21 plus 180, and you get 258, sorry, there's a right, you get 258.21 degrees, and that's how you would do the problem, and it's the same exact thing for tangent and cosine and sine. But the whole thing you need to remember here is that inverse sine uh, property, that in the inverse of the sine is kind of like taking the square root of a square. It just gives you what you're taking the function of. And uh, so in this case, the function is taking sine of 2 theta. So to do taking a sine of something, you use the inverse sine function. 
And my final answer, lo and behold, is right here where it's 11.79 degrees, 78.21 degrees, 191.79 degrees, and 258.21 degrees. So I hope that helps, and uh, any hope I promise you to.